Welcome back to Love and Dubai Show. We are now joined by one of South Africa's top comedians. It's the one and only Mark Lottering. He is a stand out, stand up. And you can catch his show, Uncle Mark, tonight at the Theatre Mall of the Emirates. Welcome to the show, Mark. Woo! Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thank, Thank you so much you. for coming. Thank so you. So you being such an incredible and famous and renowned comedian, tell us a joke. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> a request every comedian does not like <laughs> early in the morning. Um, now, I'll, I'll save the jokes for tonight. You know, I tell the jokes for money. Oh. So, <laughs> we'll save it for tonight. It's always the worst thing to ask a comedian, well, certainly to ask me to tell a joke, because then you just get unfollowed, because it always comes across um, as really lame, I think. Um, I, I, I like to vibe, you know, with a live audience and, and see how it goes, which is why I'm looking so forward to tonight. You know, we really appreciate you being here because we know that you have a live gig tonight and this yes. is an early show. So thank you so much for coming. When did you arrive in Dubai? I see you've been posting on Twitter and tic- or on TikTok and Facebook. What's been your impressions since you landed? Um, I arrived yesterday. Uh, this place is just amazing. Like things just move all the time. And um, it would be bad for me to live here. It looks like one big party and nonstop. <laughs> Everybody's looking amazing. Every second person's looking like they've just stepped out of a Kardashian reality <laughs> show. That people, so yeah, people <laughs> take their lives seriously, whether they are working or whether they are partying. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> and everything is so lavish. So you can quite easily forget that you need to watch your bank account because you start swiping. Um, Because you just get into the vibe. And you know me, I'm coming from Cape Town, South Africa. So we've got to convert by five before we spend Mm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can easily be seduced. It's a very, very sexy lifestyle. Very sexy lifestyle. No lies (laughs) there. Fact, fact, fact. So tell me about your hair. Um, How do you maintain it? Do you maintain it? What came about to like, you know, dye the middle white? Where where I come from um, in South Africa, hair is a big issue, particularly in the community in which I grew up. It was a big thing uh, when we were growing up. You know, people said, um, you know, you needed to speak English and you needed to have really slicky um, hair, like the two of you. (laughs) (laughs) So if if, if your hair looked like this, it was not a good thing. Um, in our families when, when I was growing up. Uh, so um, so my hair was kept very short when I was a kid and my mother lied to me and she said, no, we keep your hair short so it's neat and tight, but when you grow your hair, you've got beautiful hair and you've got a blonde lock that will hang over your left eye. Um, and that was uh, a lie because when I started growing my hair, um, <laughs> this happened. I'm still waiting for my blonde curl to fall over my left eye. But I think when I, when I grew my hair, um, it was also good for comedy and it was good for for what was going on in our country um, at the time as well, because um, my comedy and my storytelling is also all about authenticity um, Mm -hmm. as a brown person growing up, telling the real stories, um, you know, because the communities where we come from, and a a lot of comedy always comes from a space of, from a dark space where there are really serious issues. And I think to be able to take those stories um, onto stage about prejudice and race and where we come from, and then to turn that into comedy, um, that was very po- very important when I started doing my comedy, just for for the therapy of South Africans, for healing. I think there's a lot of celebration that can happen through laughter, and you can talk about a lot of issues um, under the banner of laughter. You know, stuff you wouldn't necessarily talk about under normal circumstances. So so the hair for me, when it started growing, it was perfect for comedy <laughs> uh, because it kind of makes you stand out. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that now in South Africa, a lot of people are walking around with hair like this. Sorry. Not necessarily because it's stylish, but also we have a problem with the electricity now. We've got no <laughs> electricity in South Africa. So this hair is perfect. for the load shedding scenario. So from that, I would get that you believe that laughter is the best medicine? I firmly believe that laughter is the best medicine. Um, you know, we, we come from a place of political turmoil um, in South Africa. Even now, our politics, um, it's pretty messed up. There's so much corruption going on. Um, it's not the way we saw things because the whole world saw us as the rainbow nation with Nelson Mandela. Um, first led us and now things have taken a turn and there are so many things going wrong in the country but the comedians in South Africa are doing well because if there's one thing South Africans still will do they will leave their homes to spend an evening with comedy because comedy no matter where you are in the world 
That is what gets us through stuff. It's what helps us survive. It gets us to talk about stuff. So um, the, the old saying that it is the best medicine is absolutely true. And I hope it continues to be the best medicine for long because it keeps me um, earning money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's very important in our country. And the, and the comedians in South Africa, um, you know, it's the one industry, not the only industry, but certainly in the arts, it's one of the industries that is thriving because it, it keeps us going, it keeps us alive, it keeps you sane. It's mm. very good for your mental health. You've got to laugh. But you've been in the game for over two decades. And now when uh, comedians come to the fore, they're using social media a lot and everything to get their name known. What was it like over two decades ago, starting your career in South Africa? Was there a lot of comedians? And like, were you kind of like, uh, was it uh, like a brave move to discuss po- politics on stage at the time? It was a brave move because when I started, um, you know, there, there were not many black comedians in South Africa coming to the fore simply because of, um, you know, we were not given many opportunities at that time um, due to the policies of apartheid and we had just come out of um, a, a very right-wing government. So in, for, for, for black people, for brown people, you were held back. I mean, everybody knows that sad story. So when I started doing comedy, um, there were not many black people doing this. And and then for me to... Um, to step forward and to to do it at that time, I think, um, you know, it was very, very important. Mm. Um, And I'm I'm glad that we didn't have social media then because it was jumping into the deep end as a comedian because we we didn't, you didn't have TikTok to rely on. I mean, I I see so many people now, they're famous just because of the amazing reels. They're famous just because of the amazing TikTok stories. And we didn't have that. So it was the old school of comedy, you know, where you were sitting somewhere in a restaurant or a pub and you have a little serviette and you write a few notes down and you go into a comedy club or a, or a theater and you have to tell that story. In fact, we didn't even have so many comedy clubs. So we had to talk for 40 minutes, 50 minutes at a time. Whereas with, with the way things are now, you know, you get your opening spot, people say, do your best three minutes, do your best four minutes yeah. of comedy. Um, so I come from the old school with no social media. We had to talk for long. And for where I am now, I'm glad that I went through that because um, you kind of, you know, you, the, 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 the art of comedy, it's more refined. It's coming from a more traditional background. And when I see the social media people, now I'm not dissing the social media celebrities, but when I see it, it's, it's one thing to be at home and hold up your camera and you can do take after take after take mm. until you go, that's perfect, this is what I'm going to post. Uh, but to put that same person in front of a live audience. Mm, true. Um, they, <laughs> I, mean, easy. I mean, tonight those people will be sitting at the theater where I'll be performing and there it is. It's happening now, baby. You don't get take after take after take. You just have to do your stuff now. And it's, it's a very different world um, when you're without your camera and you're not at home and they're the live audience. So I'm glad that I started in that very traditional way. Mm-hmm. So I was going to ask you if it is intim- if social media is intimidating and pressurizing for you, but like you said, it's quite the opposite because you started traditional and now it's like you can take those expertise into social media. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So uh, yeah, I, I think it works the right way around now because, um, you know, with... Uh, It, it's, an e- it's easier this way around to come from the traditional side and now to go on to social media. I think the other way around, um, it's just not great. I mean, I've seen, I've seen people even back home who are huge on social media and people love them so much and they've got um, thousands and thousands of followers and they book them for a gig and say, you know, we're opening a shopping mall, please come. And I've seen them walk in there And suddenly you see all these people who love you, but you don't know what to do with that because there's no textbook to take you through this process where a whole bunch of strangers are shouting your name, but you only know them through your phone yeah. and you've never really experienced them. So, um, so it's easy. And, and for me, you know, navigating my way um, around social media, it's still a strange place for me because I still find it's a young thing. 
It's for you too. <laughs> <You're gonna laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit creepy for the older person sometimes to be on social media. It's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, get out. You shouldn't but be you're here. you're killing it on social media. <laughs> no, so, so I'm glad that I took some of my followers with me and I can see I mean my friends especially my younger friends they laugh about it because they can say oh we see all your older Facebook aunties are still there <laughs> on Facebook and whereas my younger fans um, are on the other platforms well you have you have YouTube that you get like a lot of views on like on your skits and then you'll have TikTok where you do your own stuff and then you blog as well so you're kind of like you're embracing it all in different ways I, I would say I am and, and, and there's a sense that you've got to move with the times you know we were having a discussion yesterday Um, I was chatting to a friend of mine here about um, because she was getting frustrated with um, when she's performing, people are sitting with their phones. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I, I get very annoyed when people take calls or WhatsApping while you're performing and doing a gig. But you can't get away from it. It's where the world's at now. Ushers can run around and say, please put off your phones. I tell ushers now at the theatre, don't scream at people to put it off because... It's a form of PR as well. Mm. Young people only know that if they really love your show, they're sitting, they film two minutes of it, they post True. it, and they're selling tickets for you. It's the way the world works. I think the problem kicks in, and this is when my older auntie friends, <laughs> they <laughs> sit for like 40 minutes and almost film the whole show. That's when you've got to tell that person, no, chill. So somehow <laughs> you've got to meet the world where the world is at. Um, you know, and, and you've just got to be sensible as to how that thing works. But social media is a part of our lives. It's where we're all at right now. Um, I want to ask you about one of your recent blogs. Yes. Because uh, it made me lol. Uh, tell us about your I love you, but you're basically saying love doesn't conquer all. Yes. And that hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt you. <laughs> Give me one or two things that I said in that blog um, okay, because so, it, I posted that a while back. So, okay, so uh, things like you could be in love, however, like, your partner has bad breath or they have weird toes or maybe they're snoring at night yeah i have a thing about toes um (laughs) because i don't have great toes so it's weird that i have a thing about toes so i think if we've got issues (laughs) no if we have issues we need to see your toes (laughs) wow (laughs) no we we want to sell tickets so tonight let's let's not get unfollowed But I, no, no, no. But I think if we have, if we've got issues in our lives, the three of us sitting here, you, 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 I won't ask you what your issues are. I won't ask you what your issues are. What are but you saying? The, she's perfect. She's oh, of the course, perfect she's perfect. Woman. No, we all have. We all have perfect women. <laughs> okay. What is he These two what are perfect. Do you mean our inner issues or things that we perceive that other people, you know, we all uh, have our insecurities. We have our insecurities. Let me say this. Say, if I'm on about toes, for example. <laughs> I, 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 t- I tend to look at people's toes because I'm always thinking mm. about my own toes. So I judge people harshly who wear sandals and who don't have... Gr- <laughs> How are you looking down? We do that. <laughs> <laughs> we wear sandals. We do that. So like, <laughs> no, because my toes now are I'm going, because, No, because so now I'm going... Mm, I would have made different choices <laughs> because, you know, you, and, and, and so I think it's important if you like somebody, for example... On at least by the by the third date, that person needed to have seen your toes oh before things. <laughs> no, before things move on, you don't want surprises um, well into the relationship. What are you not? <laughs> you don't want surprises. I'm agreeing well. with him. You don't want surprises. You don't want surprises. You like yeah, you go like, babe, it. these are my toes. Are you comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm okay, saying, like you mean skeletons out of the closet. You can call it what you want, call it skeletons out of the closet. I also say, especially in the world in which we live right now, um, I'm not sure what it's like in Dubai, but certainly in Cape Town, in my circle of friends, people are starting to to do um, like light cosmetic work younger. Oh, yeah. So... Um, in so, Dubai, it's big <laughs> so like, not, but, 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 you know, uh, but for me, it always used to be a thing of, I oh, know people are going to start doing that. Um, early 40s, maybe, that's when they'll really start. Mm -hmm. But that's changed. Everybody's, and people are speaking openly about, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm really, I'm going to do this to my eyes, or I just want to, just yeah, or just yeah, it's not going to be hectic, you won't even know. It's not going to be hectic. (laughs) And then some of my friends look great. Like, they just look like they've been away on holiday. Yeah. And others, um, you can, like, go, oh, wow. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, I know. You look oh different. <laughs> so, 
for for that now and we do. that's why now I think also when you're in a relationship you need to ask people oh show me um, pictures of your mom and and your dad because you have to see what the family really looks like oh. because how the, because suddenly babies are going to be born and they look very different <laughs> to the person you got married to because children tell the truth so children come you know children come into the world with no cosmetic surgery so they oh. will they, they will show that one left eye that was a little bit out there or whatever so we need we need honesty in relationships wow. and when it comes to uh, and my other thing I, it's not even in the blog but the other thing we were also talking about last week is people say what saves marriages and i say separate bathrooms as well that can also annoy you you know everybody's fabulous when they're dating uh, everybody's <laughs> fabulous when they're up for a night out but when you move in with somebody oh. and you live with somebody that's when you're really going to have to focus on this word love because suddenly you're going to see how this person uses the bathroom you know in what state they leave the bathroom i know you can tell i've been on the planet many many years <laughs> i'm sounding like a facebook true. person you're right <laughs> yes. no you're you're speaking to the choir whoever the made choir. it the norm to share a room and a bathroom with your spouse like mm, that person's gone to hell and i'll tell you what the interesting thing is hmm. so i read this article more than a month back where they said i mean i don't know if you've ever watched those old 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 the old sitcoms and then they show them especially american sitcoms they're like throwbacks where people used to laugh and they go ah oh, look at that couple they had separate bedrooms mm. you okay. know people cuz that that was happening way now. back people had separate bedrooms and then um this discussion it was with somebody did this blog and they were saying um they were they were happy together in the UK and they bought these townhouses next to each other oh. they are married couple but they live in separate oh, homes right next that? to each other and they said it's very spicy <laughs> because they they have dinner and then they go like um don't you want to stay oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's getting annoyed with anybody else. I think you obviously it takes a bit of money to do that, but to them it makes absolute sense. And that came about with this whole discussion as to how we were laughing and looking at people in the 60s living um in separate bedrooms and people are saying, "Well, you know, if I, if I am in this for, you know, for for a long time and I'm going to be with you for 15 years, I'm going to be with you for 25 years." Perhaps I just want to keep it spicy, keep it separate. Whatever works for you, right? In a relationship, it's What, like you do you. Whatever works for you in your relationship. I look at couples and I I would look at them in coffee shops. <laughs> and I talk about this in the show as well. And I always sit there and I and I pray to God, please don't let me ever be that. Because you see couples and they sit at a table and they they don't even look at each other. <laughs> while they're waiting for the poussin you know yeah. and you go to them and you go and they go no we're happy <laughs> but i don't maybe they are happy um How i don't do i, I don't ever want happiness to be defined <laughs> like that you know and you wonder what conversations do people have when, when after 20 years of marriage I'm i'll tell you what conversations the they have what do they have You didn't call the plumber. You didn't flush the toilet. You didn't put the kids to sleep. I always have to put the kids to sleep. You never do anything for this family. I'm doing everything for this family. So you see, immediately you think it's that, you know, that they that they are yeah, fighting. Yeah, you're right. It could be that because I would think they go things like, um, mm, you know, did you see um, on the WhatsApp group on the family group? It was Maureen's birthday. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wish her? <laughs> no, I thought you'd do it for both of us. But it's your cousin. Yeah, but... Okay. Let's... <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine those. Those are the conversations. What are we watching on Netflix tonight? I don't know. Yeah, we still have to do the other thing. Because I'm watching the documentary. But then, yeah, let's watch the other. Because also you want to, you don't want to be weird about your marriage, so you do want to watch the same thing at the same time. Yeah. Some, yeah. <laughs> no, some people go to the other room and they watch some. Which brings me back to maybe living in separate houses or separate, separate rooms. At least rooms. Yeah, we massively <laughs> digress, but the one okay. is one of my favorite of yours on YouTube. By the way, love it so much. What can people? Ex- we want to play a quick game with you, but before you okay. go, what can people expect from tonight's show? From tonight's show, I've been on tour with the show. We've been to London, Australia, and obviously in South Africa, and been to Namibia. And 
uh, I always try to, to, to talk about what's relevant in my life. And suddenly, about three years back, people just walked up to me and started saying things like, um, hey, Uncle Mark. And I'm like, when did I become your <laughs> uncle? You know, and people are kind of um, allowing me to pass first as they would elders. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Um, I mean, I'm here. I'm in that chapter of my life. So, um, so I talk a lot um, to young people and people who are older than younger people in the audience what it's like um, to be Uncle Mark. Now, and the, when, when we decided uh, that this is what the show would be called, I went out with some friends and um, you know, I saw a cute person um, standing at the bar, and a friend of mine said, "Oh, eye contact is being made. Just, just, just buy a drink. You know, send it over. You're just sending over a drink. It's harmless." And I sent over the drink, and cute person <laughs> turned around in front of everybody and asked, "Who's it from?" And the barman pointed at me, and cute person shouted, oh, "Uncle Mark, oh. <laughs> my mommy's got all your VHS tapes." <laughs> and I was like. Okay, <laughs> I'm there now. <laughs> I wanted to take the drink, back, but no. I'm there. So, so we, so that's the vibe of the show, um, and we've been having a great time because Amazing. I think everybody can relate to the issues. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, seeing all the expats tonight, and not even only expats. People have been saying, even if they're not from South Africa, they've been coming. They're coming to watch. So. It's, be awesome. it's going to be a blast. It's tonight at the theatre, Mall of the Emirates. Tickets on Platinum List. But just before you leave us, we're going to play a quick game. Sure. It's called What Gives Mark Lottering the Ick? And if the thing that we say is icky, press the buzzer. Icky means like, uh-uh. Mm. Okay. okay. Like no, off. turn yeah, it off. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I'll start. Okay, asking about kids on the first date. Um, that's fine. That's fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah um, you have to. <laughs> Cake face, too much makeup. Uh, having really, really, really long toenails. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckle cracking. Knuckle cracking. Oh, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> People are coming back. Smelly that can be a feet. <laughs> No one's You're behind that one. Yeah. Uh, full body waxing. Cool. Um, corns and blisters on your feet. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, 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 where were you last night? <laughs> Something's bothering you. <laughs> Just because I know you hate ugly feet. <laughs> um, uh, cleaning clogged drains. No. Feet tattoos. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the very final one: influencers for the sake of influencing. Um, cool. I mean, you added for the sake of influencing, <laughs> so uh, there you went somewhere else. But influencers, fine. Okay, Mark Lauder, we had a lot of fun with you today. Thank you so much for joining our show. We really appreciate it this morning. It's wonderful to chat to perfect people. I so seldom meet two perfect Thank people you. who've never had like work with done. no imperfections. <laughs> with no imperfections. Botox for 27. Beautiful feet. <laughs> Guys, that is all we have time for. Thank you so much for joining. And we'll see you on Monday morning, same time, same place. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.